Hey guys, how's it going? Lost Belt 7 is here on JP, so that means that we have a slew of new characters from mythology showing up to fill out the roster. We got surprisingly debated into believing that we would be going to Brazil, but given that we will never truly land in South America, we have some major Aztec influence for the servants that have shown up. So if you're looking for a bite-sized, story-spoiler-free guide to who all these new characters are in myth, you've come to the right place. So without further ado, let's take a look. I'm going to reiterate this point that this is a story spoiler free list, with the only spoilery thing being that I am going to reveal character names and designs. I will not say what they do in the story or how they interact with characters, you'll have to see that on your own time. While I'm sure someone considers the fact that I will be using character names at all, I want you to recall that these names will be on full display whenever these characters can be summoned anyway, so this really isn't spoiling anything. Oh, also I don't speak Aztec, so sorry in advance. Enough of that, let's get into it. Let's start with the big one, Tezcatlipoca, or as I will be referring to him, Tez. Tez is a central deity in the Aztec belief system and is associated with a number of different things, namely jaguars, aspects of the night like the night sky and the night wind, war, earth, hurricanes, obsidian, love and sorcery, and a bunch of other stuff as well. The connections that I believe are going to be the most important in regards to how he appears in fate are going to be jaguars, as this Nakwal was a jaguar, obsidian, night and mirrors. Jaguars, in the night in particular, are likely what's going to be trumped up the most given his direct connection with Kets. It has been shown that Fate's rendition of Kets seems to have a bit of a sore spot for Jaguars, and that likely comes from the mythological rivalry of Tez and Kets. The two were in constant competition to best the other, having destroyed more than a couple of sons in their efforts to best each other. Despite this, it was both Tez and Kets who decided to set their differences aside to create the world. In one telling of the story, before the world existed, there was only a giant sea and a massive earth monster that resembled a grotesque crocodile named Chipactli that lived within it. The two deities devised a plan, and Tez offered his leg as bait towards Chipatli, who bit it off. Using the opportunity, they captured the creature and morphed its body into what we now know as Earth. Mind you, this did not kill the monster, and after Tez and Kets made humans, they ordered humans to make sacrifices to Chipotle to ease her comfort. This is how the world was made and how Tez lost his leg. In most cases, his leg is replaced by an obsidian mirror. Other versions of this myth have Tez becoming the sun, but is attacked by Kets, so in vengeance, he destroys the world as a jaguar and sets off a cycle of vengeance that would destroy the world several more times. Perhaps what should be most kept in mind when dealing with Tez is the fact that he is a supreme deity. When he was worshipped by the Aztecs and when they ordained a new king, it was traditional for the newly appointed king to appear naked before Tez and admit that despite his current status of royalty, he is vulnerable and irrelevant in the face of such a mighty deity. I am sure this will play into something in the future. Next is the god of water, Tlaloc. I say that they are the god of water, but they are most closely associated with being a god of the rain. However, they have continued association with the mountaintops, springs, herons, earth fertility, and hay. Tlaloc even has a mountain where it is believed that the god resides called Mount Tlaloc. They are also one of the oldest worshipped Mesoamerican deities, and believe it or not is still worshipped in Mexico today to some regards. Tlaloc is often depicted with a heron feather mask, a wand to represent lightning, and a cornstalk. They would often be offered the skulls and skeletons of jaguars in sacrifice as it was believed that the great value of such offerings would bring fertile rains and good crops. The primary role that Tlaloc plays in mythology is as a representation of the rains and being the third sun that was destroyed by fire. Tlaloc would govern an underworld of an everlasting green springtime that would welcome the souls of those killed violently in the water, those killed violently in water-related deaths such as drowning, lightning, and water-based diseases. Also, if you were sacrificed as a child or died of leprosy, you would go to this afterlife as well. People who were killed in such a way were not cremated, as was the tradition, but had seeds placed inside their faces, wrapped in paper, and buried into the ground. Festivals to this god would take place in March, and children would be sacrificed to the deity atop his sacred mountain. Next is Huitzilipochtli, or as I will be calling him, Huitzil. Huitzil is another war deity, but is also very closely associated with the rituals of human sacrifice. He is the youngest sibling of his family, which includes both Ketz and Tez, and is described as the smallest of them. It was Ketz and Huitzil who worked together to create the first man and woman, as well as fire, to give to them. So his role in myth is fairly important. A different story of his origin is actually similar to the birth of Athena in a way. One day the goddess Kuatlekue was sweeping when a ball of feathers somehow knocked her up without her knowing, discovering that their mother was pregnant in such a way, her 400 sons and one daughter conspired to kill her as this was unbefitting. When the 401 came to kill their mother, Quetzal burst from her womb in full armor and decapitated his sister. His brothers fled and became the stars in the night sky, while he became the sun and his sister the moon. 
This is why the sun chases the moon across the sky. It was at this point in my research for this video that I determined that this is one of the most metal mythologies that exists. Quetzal is supremely important to Aztec myth because it is believed that he requires human sacrifices to sustain himself every 52 years, and if he doesn't receive them, the world will end just as the four worlds before him did before he became the sun god. As such, everyday Aztecs would bleed themselves regardless of their age to nourish the god, animals would be sacrificed at temples and by individuals to appease the god, but most importantly, human sacrifice were required. This is why Aztec warriors would aim to disable or maim their opponents in war. If an enemy was incapacitated, they could be taken back and sacrificed to the sun god. These rituals often involved cutting the still bleeding heart out of the victim and held high while it was still pulsing. The Aztecs were originally from a place called Aztalan, but Huitzil ordered that they move and never return, and that he would guide them to a new home. However, they must never call themselves Aztecs any longer, but rather, Mexica. After leading them for some time, he left them in the charge of his sister who founded a city, but the people didn't like her ruling method and wanted Huitzel back. So Huitzel put his sister to sleep and guided the former Aztecs elsewhere. When she came to, the sister was furious and wanted revenge, so she gave birth to a son, and when he was old enough, sent him to attack Huitzel. Reluctantly, the sun god killed his nephew and threw his heart into a lake. Later, he ordered the Mexica to go and find the heart, and that they would find it where an eagle resting atop a cactus was eating a sacred snake. They found this spot and founded their city. If that iconography sounds familiar to you, it's because that is what's on the flag of Mexico. Let's move right along to Kamazots, or as I'm going to call him, Cam. Cam is actually not Aztec related and is instead a Mayan deity whose name literally translates to Death Bat. He has associations with, you guessed it, bats, the underworld, and human sacrifices. In fact, he is often depicted carrying a sacrificial dagger and a human heart. Unfortunately for us, we do not really see a lot of what Cam does in myth. He pretty much flies out of a cave, rips people's heads off, and then leaves with them. He does make an appearance, however, in the tale of the Mayan twins, Juanapu and Zablanc, which I probably just said absolutely wrong. The twins were made to stay in the house of the bats and sought shelter inside of their blowguns. They each tucked themselves away to the safety until it became quiet, and Hunapu stuck his head out to see if they were safe. At that moment, Cam, who had been waiting patiently, swooped down and ripped the twin's head off. He then carried it off to the celestial ball court for the gods to use in their next game. He is a cunning and brutal deity, and one I am very excited to see in Fate. Next we have the Mayan cats, Kuklakan, who I embarrassingly knew because of Smite and who I'm going to refer to as Cuckoo. Cuckoo is a sacred feathered serpent deity with a close resemblance to cats and has been described as a serpent of war. Despite this, the cult of Kuklakan was a relatively peaceful one that negotiated trade and good tidings with other ethnic groups in the area. But despite this peaceful surface, because we're dealing with Aztec and Mayan deities, you better believe that Cuckoo watched over human sacrifices. But other than that, we actually don't have that much info on him. Cuckoo is a weird case where despite being the older deity, the sheer righteousness that emanates from Kets just kind of overtook his depiction. It is worth touching on that Cuckoo is sometimes seen in human form, and yet this is likely not the deity but a famous ruler who happened to share the same name. Given this gap in knowledge, it'll be interesting to see what is done with her fate depiction. For the final character that I am currently aware of, let's take a look at the Black Panther himself, Izkali. There are no deities by the name of Izkali. Thank you for watching. Nah, but for real, there's nothing that my research is turning up outside of East Kali being the 18th and final month in the Aztec calendar. That puts this character in a bit of an awkward position. Are they going to be a representation of the end of times because they are concluding the calendar? It would seem to fit that three of the deities present are capable of destroying the world on their own if they feel like it. Is he instead a different deity, possibly Tepelilotl, who is an Aztec god of caves, earthquakes, and jaguars? Tepe has a connection to Tez, so it's possible for sure, but as of now, East Kali is a bit of a wild card. But there you go, your spoiler-free guide to all the new characters coming in Lost Belt 7. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you thought down below. Let me know what you think about Lost Belt 7 so far for playing through it. From what I've seen, I think I might actually want to try and catch up on the story. So I'm going to be a part of the part three story, the subterranean found pants, when that inevitably drops. Regardless, I hope you all enjoyed. Check my links down below for my Discord, Twitch, and Twitter. But for now, guys, keep your chin up. Peace.